Hello guys, this is Physics Chessy. As I mentioned in earlier video, this video is going to be on the real life applications of eigenvector and an eigenvalue. Now let us see one of the few applications of eigenvectors and eigenvalues in real life. Eigenvectors and eigenvalues are used in solid mechanics and many other subjects. But let us see one of the example in solid mechanics where a concept of eigenvectors and eigenvalues have been used. Okay. Before going into the example, first we have to know few terms in solid mechanics so that we can understand how an eigenvector and eigenvalue is going to be used in this real life applications. Okay, let's say we have a stress system in the form of matrix. So now you can ask what is this sigma xx, tau yx, tau xy and sigma yy. So I am going to explain few terms in solid mechanics in order to understand this real life example. Okay, let's say we have a square object or a metal sheet or any product. So a stress is going to be applied on this object. So uh, this stress system is expressed in terms of matrix. Now the sigma is called normal stress and this tau is called shear stress. Normal stress is nothing but when a force is applied perpendicular to the plane so that the force divided by this cross section perpendicular cross section will give normal stress and shear stress is when the force is applied tangential to the plane like this okay so this is called shear stress now what so now you will have one more question what is this x x y x why you have been represented as this y y x y in subscript this is nothing but see it, uh, these stresses are tensor quantity tensor quantity is a quantity in which you have to specify magnitude direction and as well as the plane of application for example if you see this shear stress tau y x is in x direction and normal stress x x is also in x direction but this normal stress xx is applied on the x plane, x is equal to constant plane. This plane is x is equal to constant plane. Whereas tau yx is applied in the same direction as sigma xx, but it is applied on the plane on which y is equal to constant. That means first the shear stress and the plane of application have to be mentioned, y plane. And the direction of the application of the stress should be mentioned. So tau yx and sigma. Sigma x plane and x direction. So this is how we will go, we are going to represent a tensor quantity stress. Now coming to the point, failure does not cause because of the normal stress. In the majority case. For example, let's see. If you have a plane of sheet or a plane of object, suppose if you uh, apply a normal stress on this plane, it's not going to fail. But whereas if you apply the same amount of stress in tangential wise, the shear stress, see the object or the metal sheet is going to distort and it's going to fail. So we have to get rid of the shear stress on the object and or we should minimize as low as possible the shear stress on the object in order to prevent it from failure or to have a long leading life to the object or a product. This concept is used in like many automobile parts or gears or many industries where the, the dynamics of the parts like many stresses are going to act on the on those objects or many uh, elements so that if you orient these orient or design these products in such a way so that there, there are there are not going to be any shear stress applying on those objects these objects and uh, parts or instruments going to have a long life and it can be prevented from failure 
Okay. Now let's see how eigenvectors are helping these engineers and designers for designing these kind of stuffs. So let's say we have a stress system like three, five, two, two. This is nothing but like sigma x x three newton per meter square, five newton per meter square, two. And two newton per meter square. So you can see that if a system of stress is going to apply on this object, for a calculation purpose, we have divided the stress as vertical component and horizontal component. But if you see the resultant of this, the stresses are going like this, like this. So it's going to pull this object in a such a way that. The object is going to deform like this, and you can see that the perpendicular. If you draw a perpendicular in the either of the plane, it makes 90 degree. Whereas, if you drop a perpendicular on either of the planes, it does not going to make perfectly 90 degrees. By this way, we can see that the object is distorted. So. it's going to fail at some point and its life is getting shorter so in order to prevent this distortion we have to, we are using the concept of eigen vectors and eigen values let's see how i will use a different sketch for showing the vectors okay let's say each plane is taken or assumed as a vector so we have how many we have many such kind of planes horizontal plane this plane plane there are different kinds of plane infinite amount of planes so we have to find which vector is not going to change its direction when this force system is applied on this object so that we can orient this object in the direction of such vector did you get it and the concept of using the stress system in a matrix so that they can find the eigen vector and they can find in which direction this the direction of vector is not going to change that is in which direction the shear stress is going to be minimum or zero shear stress that's a wonderful mind blowing idea okay let's see for example so it's going to distort now let's say for example if 2 comma 3 is going to be a eigen vector of this matrix or this stress system 2 comma 3 it's just an example the values are not correct such that it's giving you 6 comma 9 which is one more vector that is nothing but thrice as the former vector so this is the eigen value of this stress system or matrix now we are going to see that if 2 comma 3 is the eigen vector of the stress system then 1 2 1 two, 3 so this is going to be our eigen vector that means if this vector if you if this if the this this operator is going to operate on this vector it's just going to scale this vector scale this vector three times it's not going to change the direction of the vector so if you orient this play, this object or this product like this like this plane should coincide on this plane now we can see that on apl on application of this system on this product these vectors represent say parallel vectors these planes this object is going to get deformed like this this object is going to deform like this it's going to stretch thrice as the 
initial length whereas this length is also not going to distort it's going to straight it's going to be like change in the magnitude because this is also an eigen vector one eigen vector of the matrix is this and another eigen vector will become this one if you see, if you want you can check in calculations and this is going to be reduced in scale why this is reducing is because of conservation principle of solid mechanics if one has to increase and one has to decrease that's we can see that concept in another video okay so now hence we avoided the distortion and shear stress on this object so we only have the normal stress and if you only have normal stress on such plane this stress is called principal stress so this is how the concept of eigen vector and eigen values is applied in solid mechanics thank you hope you all understood and had a very good time